Welcome to the State Museum of the History of Religion in St. Petersburg, Russia. This museum was originally founded in 1932 under communism, when religion was meant to be a thing of the past. But now that Soviet communism is a thing of the past, the museum celebrates different religious traditions, housing artifacts from many times and cultures, including that of the Jews. The Mishnah, the great compendium of Jewish law and knowledge, tells us, the world stands on three things, the Torah, service of God, and acts of kindness. These three principles form the foundation of Jewish life over the centuries, helping to create a system of ritual and charity that enabled the survival of Jewish communities through good times and through years of great hardship. The collection at this museum can teach us about the Jewish religion, but some of the items go farther, telling the story of specific people who are long vanished and forgotten, but who left us an unexpected trace in the form of an artifact. If we can decode what the object is trying to tell us, we'll learn something about these people and their lives long ago. Take, for example, this cheap vase that meant a great deal to a very rich man and also helped historians solve a mystery. The Hebrew inscription reads, from his munificence, the woebegone have mercy. And for the elderly and the forgotten, he has prepared a refuge and a retreat. In the shade of his compassion, they are safe and protected. This ceramic vase was presented to a man named Moise Ginsberg on behalf of the residents of an almshouse, a shelter for the poor that he founded in St. Petersburg in 1913. These were the last years of Tsarist Russia, and Ginsberg was one of the city's great philanthropists, one of the rare Jews allowed to live in what was then the capital. Most Jews were restricted to areas on the periphery of the Russian Empire. Ginsberg built the almshouse on Vasilevsky Island, one of the historic districts of St. Petersburg on a plot of land that he owned. In this photograph, we see the elderly residents who were given food and shelter at the almshouse. Judging by the uniform jackets and visored caps, these are veterans of the Imperial Army who served under Tsar Nikolai II. Within just a few years, Nikolai would lose his throne and his life to the Bolshevik Revolution. After 25 years of loyal army service, these men were allowed to settle in the capital, outside the designated area for Jews, known as the Pale of Settlement. The fact that they still identified as Jews is notable because in the Tsar's army, Jewish soldiers were pressured to convert to Orthodox Christianity, the official religion of the regime. It took great fortitude to maintain their Judaism through decades of service. Because they observed kashrut, the Jewish dietary laws, they couldn't eat in the canteens and hostels that served other poor Russians. For these veterans, Ginsburg's almshouse was a salvation allowing them to keep themselves alive and also to keep their faith. Ginsburg supported many Jewish causes, including an organization called the Jewish Historical and Ethnographic Society. The society had a museum and a magazine, Yevreskaya Starina, or Jewish Antiquity. Both the museum and the magazine operated out of the same building as the almshouse. Considering the scale of Ginsburg's charity, the vase honoring his good deeds might seem remarkably simple. Gift vases of this kind were usually carved from expensive stone, but this one is cheap and fragile. If it was given to him by people who relied on his help, it might have been the most they could afford. Nevertheless, it was clearly important to Ginsburg, and ultimately it became important to researchers trying to solve an historical mystery. In 1914, Ginsburg's Ethnographic Society held an exhibition of items gathered by the famous writer and folklorist Simeon Ansky. Ansky had just returned from an expedition documenting Jewish life in the Russian Empire, the first expedition of its kind. In two journeys in the Pale of Settlement through the provinces of Volhynia, Podolia, and Kiev, Ansky brought back 700 items that he called Jewish antiquities. The collection would come to have importance to historians, particularly after Jewish life was largely wiped out by the Nazi invasion and by decades of communist repression. 
but by the time it was understood to be important, the collection had disappeared. In 1929, during the years of Stalinist rule, Soviet authorities declared the Jewish Historical and Ethnographic Society a bourgeois organization, and they liquidated it. The fate of most of the artifacts was unknown. They were hard to trace because the items that Ansky collected were typical of everyday Jewish life, so it was next to impossible to decisively identify any artifact as belonging to the famous collection. What helped solve the mystery was the object with which we began the story. In this photograph of the Ansky collection from 1914, we see our vase. And this is strange because, of course, the vase wasn't part of the ethnographic collection. It was a token of appreciation given to Ginsburg not long before, kind of like a plaque or a pen. It had no historical significance of its own. The vase was probably displayed simply to draw attention to Ginsburg's philanthropy. After all, he funded the museum and the almshouse in the same building. And displaying the vase was a way of paying respect to the man who made it all possible. The vase might have been far less important than the other objects on display, but unlike them, it was one of a kind. So when researchers here at the State Museum of the History of Religion set out to find the collection, they decided to use the vase as a kind of fingerprint. Using historical documents, the researchers managed to trace the travels of the vase starting in 1931, when it was transferred from the State Museum of Belarus in Minsk to an institution called the Central Anti-Religious Museum in Moscow. After that institution was merged with the Leningrad Museum of the History of Religion in 1947, the vase returned home to this city, Leningrad, or St. Petersburg, along with part of the Ansky collection. Researchers were able to identify artifacts that appear next to the vase in the photograph from 1914. For example, one part of this mirror was found in the historical museum in Minsk. So Ginsburg's vase ended up making a contribution to historical research, helping rescue the Ansky collection from obscurity. It also preserved a rare portrait of Ginsburg himself, what appears to be the only reliable portrait. The benefactor's image and name meant something to the elderly army veterans and to the many others he helped. But revolution, political upheaval, and time have obscured his memory. The name Moise Ginsburg was inscribed on the wall of the almshouse that he built in St. Petersburg. It's still there, but now it's invisible, obscured by layers of paint and plaster. <laughs>